Hey guys, welcome. Sorry I'm a little late starting everything. My computer decided to make me reboot right at this moment. Um, but appreciate everybody joining. We'll get off to a fast start here. Real One thing I want to be sure that everybody's uh, familiar with and aware of, we're, we're going to be trying to keep this as interactive as possible. We want to address your questions. That's the whole idea of this exercise is just to be here to help you make your email marketing work for you better. So uh, we definitely want to hear your questions. Um, in fact, if you have a specific situation that you'd like to share with the group, we'd love to have you do so. We'll just bring you on stage is what they call it. Um, and you can tell everybody your story, you know, what you're trying to accomplish, a little bit about you, what your challenges are, or just what your question is. And instead of just getting answers from me, you'll get answers from the whole group. Um, so it's a real uh, great opportunity. we got a lot of people showing up today. So you can get, a, you know, uh, 30 heads are better than one, right? <laughs> um, so as an example of how that will work, just so everybody can uh, understand that I am going to right now invite Brent on our team on stage um, so that he can just say hello to you. Um, Brent, are you there? Looks like you're muted. Hey, sorry for that. Hey guys, how are everyone? Brent here. Yeah, and Brent, everybody, Brent will be keeping an eye on the chat as will I. So as we go here, if you have questions, put them in the chat for sure. But then towards the end of the session, we'll, um, you know, if you want to come on stage and, and ask the group a question, great. Just mention that in chat and then I'll invite you on stage. Hope that makes sense to everybody. Um, if it doesn't, let us know and we'll, uh, uh, we'll, you know, let us know in the chat. Okay, so let's get started. Um, let's see. I'm going to, let's see, you guys are seeing my screen now. Okay. So just for everybody that's not been here before, we're, you know, our intent, like I said earlier, is to really help you with your email campaigns. We've been doing this for almost 20 years now. So we've learned a thing or two, uh, a lot of it the hard way. And, uh, you know, just want to share that uh, experience with you. Um, one thing I want to do, though, is get you guys input or just get a feel for, you know, your level of expertise so we can make sure that we're not going too deep or going too slow. Um, so um, I'm going to pull up a poll here. And if you guys would just answer that quick question, rate your email marketing expertise. That way we'll all have a feel for, you know, the, the group here and, um, you know, how much experience everybody has. Um, so I can see some answers coming in now. Um, so um, we've got at least one expert here. So that's good news. Uh, I'm not the only one. I'm not going to call myself an expert, actually. I would, I would say I'm experienced. Uh, I know enough to be dangerous. And I'm lucky enough to have some good people that I work with that know a lot more than me. Um, okay, so, but it looks like, you know, some people that have, you know, been there and done that a little bit, but also some people that are just getting started. Um, so that's great. You're in the right place because we're, you know, some of the things we're going to talk about today, it took me a couple of years to figure out. <laughs> Hopefully we can make that simpler and faster and get you to success uh, faster and easier. Um, but again, please let us know if you have questions as we're going here, if we're skipping over things that you'd like to know more about, say something in the chat. Um, okay. Today, what we're going to do, um, number one, last week's workshop is on our website. Uh, we've got a blog post where we're just posting all of the previous sessions. So you can go back and watch those. Um, the topic last week was measuring clicks and conversions and how to use that data to optimize your campaign. 
Uh, and then content curation tips, you know, how to find content for your emails without, you know, spending thousands of dollars and weeks and weeks of time. And then we talked a little bit about e email authentication. As most of you probably know, there's some new rules that you need to be aware of. And we talked about that. If anybody was there last week or here last week um, and has any questions about that, now's a good time to chime in. Um, to this week, um, we're going to talk about localization and personalization of emails. I'll, we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Um, we're also going to talk about sales lead nurturing processes that get results. Um, and then, like I mentioned before, we'll get into your questions. Send your questions in as they occur to you, and we'll try to address them as we're going, but for sure, we'll spend more time at the end. Okay, so in terms of localization and personalization, that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of people, and I'm we're not going to get super advanced here, um, but I'll, I'll, I'm going to try to help you out, help you understand this topic through a, you know, a story that's, you know, real and going on for us right now. All of you guys, or many of you guys, have probably received this very email, right? This is part of our campaign to invite people to join this workshop. And, you know, the good news is we're three sessions in, the attendance is going up, the registrations are going up, you know, it's, it's building. That's great. You know, thank you guys for, for being part of this. Um, but one thing I've noticed is that our um, open rate on this particular email is going down. Um, so, you know, I talked to one of the smarter people that uh, works with us on our email marketing. And he immediately looked at it and he he says, you know, Craig, you're you've sent the same email three times. You know, you got to mix it up. And it's just, you know, it kind of doesn't jump out at you. He just, you know, a lot of times it's that objective third party input that, you know, helps you see what you should see, but you don't because you created it yourself. You know what I mean? Um, so simple advice. And his very first suggestion was use some mail merge fields in there to personalize the content and it'll get more attention, including putting it in the subject line. So, um, you know, very timely because we had already chose this topic for this week, uh, but uh, I'm going to just show you what we did to improve it. Um, you know, here's the email and all it's the only mail merge is right here, Susan, you know, or the first name, right? Everything else, everybody gets the same exact copy and so on, right? Um, you know, so what we did is we just added here where you see underlined with the highlighter, a mail merge field for their company name and a mail merge field for what industry they're in. Um, so we and reworded the the first sentence a little bit, you know, so now it's, is your company's email marketing to your industry customers getting results, right? And then down here, we're mail merging in their company name again, and their revenue, which we have in our database. Um, you know, so now this is what it looks like when Susan gets it, right? is Markham Corp's email marketing to hospitality customers getting results. Markham Corp customers are spending $23,453,300. How much of that starts with your email campaigns, right? So just, you know, when to me, to my eye, first glance, if I'm Susan, I see the company name a couple of times. I see this number that just draws your attention, right? Uh, and sure enough when we sent it out um we tested it yesterday and sure enough got a much higher click rate it was actually i think twice what we had been seeing so when i talk about personalization that's mostly what i'm talking about um 
you know, just mail merging in specific information about the customer, um, you know, to personalize the email. Localization is really a different flavor of that, right? Um, you know, in other words, I might want to have the, the email content be slightly different for my customers on the West Coast versus my customers on the East Coast or, you know, my customers in LA get a certain message, but my customers in Miami get a different message, right? Um, where it's going to be very specific, you know, hey, if you're a retail business in Miami, the hurricane season is coming. Are you prepared? Blah, blah, blah. But in LA, that same message wouldn't work, right? Because they don't have hurricanes. Um, so you can do that. Um, you know, it's all really about your data, right? Like I can't mail merge in the revenue if I don't have revenue numbers for all my, everybody on my list, right? Um, I can't segment by state or city or whatever if I don't have that information on my list. Um, so, you know, once you have that data, using it in the campaign with most systems is pretty easy. Certainly with Sales Nexus, that's, you can mail merge in any field you want. You know, there's no limitations there, including custom stuff that's unique to you or your business. Um, let me see, let me check my notes here. Um, the, I got a little, another little poll we'll do. Um, well, let me get one slide deeper here. Um, so here's another example of this. And when I talk about localization, if you're in the B2B sales world, like your, your email marketing is primarily working, going out to business customers who have a sales representative that's closing the deal with them, then localization really can mean personalizing for the salesperson, right? In other words, you see here, the bottom of that same email, we personalize based on the salesperson. So my California customers get an email that comes from, you know, Mary, their sales rep in California. But my Florida customers get an email from Mike, who's the sales rep in Florida, right? Um, that is extremely powerful when you're in a B2B um, environment or in a re retail environment, if you're doing emails across um, a large area where you have a lot of different retail locations, you may want the emails to come from that there's the specific location that's closest to that customer, right? Uh, again, it goes back to the data. If you have the data and you can organize your list in that way, it's really not that that big a deal. In Sales Nexus, that's just another mail merge field that you can insert into your email template so that I can look up all my 100,000 customers across the entire nation. And when I send out the email campaign, the system automatically figures out whose sales rep this email should be for, for each and every customer. Um, you don't have to do, you know, 50 different campaigns, one for every state rep, right? Um, you just do one, one time, and the system figures it out for you. Um, let's see, same thing with subject line. It's just a mail merge field, right? A lot of systems support this. So if you're not using sales nexus, um, you can probably do that. Um, but here, what I'm doing is just putting the first name in the subject line. Um, it helps, it works, you know, it'll increase your open rate, uh, considerably because you're just going to get their attention when they're scanning through their inbox, right? Okay, anybody have any questions about um, localization and personalization? Um, while we're waiting for questions, I got another poll. I will share with you now just to get some feedback. How, how helpful was that topic to you guys? Was that something that you think you can use 
I'd love to know if this, this information is resonating for you. So please let us know there. You should see that poll showing up now. Um, let's see. Yep. So a few uh, answers coming in. If you, you know, if you, if we didn't quite hit the mark for you and didn't, didn't really answer your questions or go deep enough, definitely say something in chat, you know, let us know what additional information that you'd like to hear. Uh, we can definitely go a little bit deeper um, if you guys would like. It's, it's tough to find the right balance here in terms of how much detail to go into. Um, and we're happy to do it if, if we feel like the audience is going to uh, benefit from it. Um, let's see. Okay, so um, the next question that I hear a lot when we start talking about this, and I've brought it up already, you know, the, it's all about the data, right? If you got the, the, if you got good data, then you can organize your list in all kinds of different ways and you can customize the campaign so that different people are receiving different messages, right? Um, but what if you don't have data like that, right? What are you going to do? Um, well, so let me try and pull up my other screen here and I'll just show you guys. Um, looks like I got logged out. I just want to show you a capability that we've recently added to sales nexus that I think could be helpful to everybody. Um, we, um, you know, even if you're, even if you're not using sales nexus or planning to use it in the future, you can do this in a free trial. <laughs> so uh, you might want to think about trying to trying it. I'm just going to pull up a list of leads here where all I have is their first name and their email address. I don't have states. I don't, I don't have phone numbers, nothing. Um, you can see there's the phone field. There's the state field. Um, if I hit the little up button, now our system is going through our contact database and finding those email addresses and you can see out of 27 people it's going to update 20 of them for me with missing information data that i didn't have in my database or on my list so you can see now i got their last names you know uh, i got their company names so i got their mailing addresses in a lot of cases if i drill into one or two of those guys we'll see um you know, you get, you're also getting their revenue and how many employees and social links and all kinds of stuff. Uh, I'll show you the social links over here. You know, so now I got uh, their website and their LinkedIn and their Twitter and all that. And, uh, you know, so now I can use all that in my mail merging and segmenting and, um, you know, customizing and personalizing those campaigns, right? So you can do that with any list in Sales Nexus. You just load your list in. Like I said before, you could even do this in a free trial and then just pull up the list like I did and hit that green button and our system will try to match everybody and update it. So you might want to try that out. Uh, okay, let me switch back over to the slides. Okay. All right, so now let's switch gears over to um, sales lead generation processes. Um, so what we're gonna talk about here are calling the clickers, calling people that click on your emails, um, being patient with this process because it's almost impossible to create the, fir the perfect process you know, on your first try. And then getting to the point where you can book meetings with email. So you're sending out emails and people are booking meetings without anybody ever picking up the phone to call and set the appointment, right? So if you're in the sales, the B2B sales world, for sure, 
and also a lot of other, um, you know, sales environments, that's kind of the holy grail, right? Um, and it can be done, you know? Um, so let's just get into how you do it. Um, so here's what a typical cold outreach sequence will look like up here in gray. Um, in fact, you know, a lot of us, a lot of you guys are probably getting emails all the time from people trying to sell you on some kind of program that will, they'll do it for you. You know, um, there's different platforms out there that specialize in this kind of marketing. Um, and typically it's either starts with, you know, going to LinkedIn and doing searches to target the right customers. And then you're trying to send them messages in LinkedIn to get connected with them. And once you're connected with them on LinkedIn, then you can get their email and put that on your list and start sending them emails in your cold email outreach sequence, right? Or it may also be your um, existing list, you know, past leads, whatever. Um, and you have some drip sequence, you know, that's designed, you know, written and designed to be, uh, to go to people that don't know you, right? Uh, which is a, you know, its own thing, of course. Um, and then in that sequence, a lot of those emails, typically the way I see people doing it, say something, you know, a little bit about, you know, sort of the, how you can help the customer. And then, hey, if you'd like to learn more, you know, let me know a good time to call you or maybe click my link to book a meeting, something like that. Right. Um, and then, you know, those emails go out and the people that don't respond at all, they go on some kind of, you know, nurture sequence or something. Right. That's generally how these things are done. And in my experience, unless you have a really big list or a lot of manpower to plow into feeding people into that uh, process, it's really hard to make it work. Um, so an alternative that we have seen work every time it's tried with our customers, we use it ourselves, our customers use it, um, is instead of trying to get that meeting booked in an email or with an email, you just call them when they click, you know, so it's the same basic sequence. You have some, you know, sequence of emails um but when somebody clicks on it you know if you think about that these are people that don't know you maybe you've just connected with them on linkedin or or maybe maybe they're an old lead a cold lead something like that but you, you know there's really not any engagement now uh, so they just got your email and in their busy business inbox, they decided to open your email and look at it. And they read it and they clicked on something in the email, right? So in a B2B world, that's a pretty strong signal, really, right? Because, you know, in my my inbox, if if I don't know you and even if I open the email, I'm just looking for a reason to delete the email, really. You know, it's going to have to basically say, hey, we have free money for you <laughs> for me to click on the link, you know? Uh, and that's, that's so point being, I'm raising my hand when I click on that link saying, hey, you know what? This is kind of interesting in, to me and you might want to call me right now. That's the way we look at it. Um, so... You pick up the phone and call them. And then, you know, if you talk to them, you don't talk to them, whatever. And then the ones that you don't talk to, they go on some nurture sequence, right? So let's talk for a minute about calling those guys. Um, the key is timing, right? Um, yeah, in fact, uh, here's a question that just came in the chat. Um, what if I can't call the clickers on the same day? Yeah, <laughs> that is the rub. Um, great question, great timing. Um, 
because that makes all the difference in the world. If you think, again, go back to just imagining how you handle the emails that show up in your inbox, right? You know, we all get a lot of them and we go through a lot of them every day and we're kind of just trying to keep it clean, right? And stay on top of it and just kind of find a reason to ignore or delete an email, right? You know, so again, if you open it and click on it, that's a pretty strong signal. But, you know, an hour later, you're going to have more emails and you're going to go through the same process and it doesn't take long before you forget ever clicking on that or going to that website or whatever, right? So what I like to say is you definitely want to call them the same day. But it, even better, you want to call them, you know, kind of within four hours or sort of the same part of the day. Like if I clicked on your email in the morning, call me before lunch. If I clicked on your email in the afternoon, call me that afternoon. You know, so if if you can't do that, back to your question, it's uh, it's usually not that you can't. It's that your system makes it almost impossible, right? Uh, in other words, you know, a lot of a lot of B two B environments, you got a marketing system where the emails are going out, and then you got a whole separate CRM that the sales team's using to make their calls, right? Um, and so in order to do this kind of clicker calling, you got to, the marketing team has to go into that campaign, find the people that clicked, export that and move it over to the CRM and assign those leads to the correct salesperson, right? You can't just upload the list and say, oh, Bob's going to call them all because you know, they might not be Bob's accounts. They might not be in Bob's territory or whatever, right? Um, so uh, that's what makes it hard, right? Um, in Sales Nexus, what we did to enable this is just what you're seeing here. Um, automatically, like we talked about earlier, the system's going to when you send out the emails, it's going to figure out who is the sales rep for each of these people and send the emails from that salesperson. So if somebody actually replies to an email and says, hey, I want to sign up now or whatever, then that goes directly to their salesperson. So that makes life easy. But also when they click the sales rep, this is their call list for today, right? And I just, you can see I've kind of crudely blocked out some personal information here just so that we didn't get ourselves in trouble. But uh, otherwise you would see their names and their phone numbers here. Um, but here's what's important, right? Click notification, build a better lead list, click notification, why leave Salesforce? This is right out of our system. This is a real sales process that we do every day. We got emails going out to all kinds of different people and our sales reps see these notifications show up right on their daily call list in real time. So if I'm sending emails out in the morning, you know, literally within minutes, they're starting to see those click notifications show up. And then if later in the afternoon, there's a different campaign that starts, they start seeing more click notifications show up and they just click into that person's name and dial the phone. So it makes it super easy for the salesperson to take action really quickly and know exactly why they're calling, right? If you clicked on the why leave Salesforce link, I kind of know what to say to you. I don't need to go read three pages of notes to figure that out, right? I can just pick up the phone and call and go, right? And man, if you do that, it works because you know what's on that customer's mind and you kind of know they're paying attention right now. They're, they're more likely to be available, right? Um, as I've said, it, it works every time it's tried. We have some clients that have liter literally been, this is their entire lead generation process for over 10 years. Um, you know, it works. Um, but you got to have your data organized and you got to have a system that, you know, takes the clicks and puts it in the right salesperson's hands instantly without 
manual labor, you know? Um, let's see. So um, let's try another poll. Um, I'd just like to know how many of you guys have done this kind of cold outreach before? Um, and we're going to get into a little more detail here, but that'll help me know kind of um, which way to go with it. Um, while I'm doing that, I'm going to put a couple other things in the chat here. Uh, we have a, a guide, a PDF that we call the email campaign guide. Um, and, um, it's just a simple guide to creating a campaign from scratch, you know, what to think about how to write from the standpoint of the recipient and not talk about you so much and just, you know, the, the finer points that we've learned over the years that work. Um, and then also I'm sending you our four steps to market domination guide. This one really gets into how to organize your data so that you can do these kind of things. Um, so we use this when you're a new client to Sales Nexus. We, we would send you this guide and it helps you kind of start thinking about how you're going to want to organize the Sales Nexus system for your business. Um, but it, all, it you don't have to be a Sales Nexus customer to use this. Um, so uh, take a look at that. Let me go back and look at the poll here. Yeah, so it looks like we got a, a pretty broad spectrum here. There's a couple of people that haven't tried it ever, cold outreach, that is. Some people that say it's it's working, uh, they're doing it and it's working. Hey, that's awesome. Good for you because that's it is not easy. Um, and then there's uh, several people that are saying that uh, they're trying it, but it's not working that great. Um so let's take it a little deeper and get into what what you might be able to do to make it work. Um, so, you know, we looked at those sequences earlier, right? So here's the next level, right? So here's the way I suggest to clients they go about this. As I mentioned earlier, you gotta have, you gotta be patient. It is not a a one and done kind of thing. It just isn't. Um, my philosophy with email marketing is it's so infinitely measurable. You know, you can track everything, opens, clicks, opt outs, bounces, everything. Right. Um, so it's a great test bed, right? You can try something, look at the data, see what works, see what didn't, and then change and adjust. Right. And if you just do that a few times, Usually in three or four tries, you're starting to get things tuned up, right? Um, so that's what I recommend you do. Start like we talked about earlier with your, your cold outreach sequence and then calling the clickers. And here's why. There's no question that when somebody clicks on your email, it's a sign of some sort, right? Um, but there's still a lot of unknowns in there, right? Um, they may be clicking on your email and going, who the heck are these people and why are they emailing, right? And they're just going to your website to find out who you are, right? That's not necessarily a good thing, but you need to know that, right? Um, so if you if you start calling these clickers, you are going to learn what, they, what that email is saying to them really quickly with no guesswork, right? So that's one benefit of starting there. And then you optimize, right? Maybe maybe your list was a little off target. Maybe you didn't refine the list down to a small enough segment to where you really know what their needs are, right? Um, or maybe the email copy just they misunderstood it and thought they were being clicking on something else. You know, who knows? But you'll find out. So you get that that first layer kind of tuned up. And then you take it to the next step, which is now instead of calling the clickers, you just automatically switch the clickers to a different campaign, a new sequence, right? 
So now we're not going to give our salespeople alerts here to call them. We're just going to automatically switch those guys to this clicked email sequence, which, you know, the where this layer, your emails will be real high level. You want to keep it real, you know, content. It's useful content for the customer, right? It's not about you. You're not trying to sell them anything. You're just trying to engage them and build trust. And then once they do, click saying, okay, I'm starting to trust you a little bit, right? Um, you put them on a new e email sequence where you're now starting to get a little more, not salesy, but you're positioning your company and your offering in their minds, right? And then you can call those clickers, the ones that click that second se sequence. That's a good way, again, to really optimize those emails quickly. You don't have to call them all. Just call a few and talk to a few and you'll you start getting a feel for it uh, really fast. Um, but then once you get that second layer to where you feel like that's really working, you're getting good open and click rates, right? Then you add another email so that when they click on this, the second sequence, this clicked email sequence, now they're getting an email specifically asking them to set an appointment, right? Because now think about it. They were getting your content emails. They clicked, right? They went down to your kind of positioning emails and they clicked again. This is now a pretty darn strong signal and there's no reason you shouldn't be saying, hey, we should probably talk. Here's my link. Let's book a meeting, right? Um, you can get there, but as I've just described, it takes a lot of tweaking, right? You're just not, it's not realistic to think that you're gonna write the perfect campaign that's gonna do all this stuff perfectly uh, on the first try. You really have to be have the mindset of let's try it, let's measure it, let's see what worked and what didn't, let's adjust, try again. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, here's really the the key takeaways. Um, on your cold sequence, that's that top level. It's got to be pure, purely content. You're not trying to sell them anything. It's helpful info for the recipient. That's it. It's not about you. Uh, in fact, most of the time, it's almost better if you don't even have your brand in there, right? That's a whole, <laughs> that's a tough decision for a lot of people to make, but that's just what we've seen. Um, the second email sequence, that clicked email sequence, um, you know, the, the, here's where you can start using things that they're not, it's not your product brochure that's definitely not what it is right that's just going to turn them off you're not ready for that yet maybe it's a buying guy like you know hey if you're um i don't know if you're if you sell rvs right um maybe you got some kind of guy that's like the five things you need to think about before you buy an rv something like that right or a competitor comparison you know in your industry there's five different major comparison or competitors you know, here's like a side by side of all those vendors, um, including you. Um, and maybe it's a little bit of about us, but not here's why our products and services are so wonderful. It's more about who are we as a company? How are we different from the other vendors in the marketplace? Um, those kind of things. Um, yeah, and that's that's what works. So now the next question is how do you get there, right? Like how does this tweaking process work? Um, if you have questions that, you know, you don't want to put in the chat or whatever, feel free to email me. Um, but if you have questions now, put them in the chat. Um, let's see. Katie's asking, would you suggest the same for nonprofits who send emails that are mostly informative and every so often send emails with a donate CTA or call to action. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, in fact, I've worked for a couple of nonprofits. Um, you know, we've had customers like that and we've done, we've helped them kind of on a uh, 
what's the right way to say it? We've donated our services to help them develop campaigns. And, uh, you know, it's the same idea, right? Um, you can take, you can do things like if you're, maybe you're sending a weekly, you know, kind of news update to your subscribers, right? Well, you know, maybe you send the donation email, the one, the email that asks for the donation only to the people that click on at least three emails or something like that, you know, so that they're, you, you know, the people getting the, the, the ask for the donation are the ones that are the most engaged and, and value the content that you're sharing with them. So that's one example. Um, in terms of the calling aspect of that, I don't know if that's what you're asking about, but um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that um, in a, in a nonprofit situation. You don't want to be salesy, obviously. You just want to take it at, you want to position it as, hey, I noticed you were, you've taken a look at several of the articles that we've sent you or, you know, whatever they are. And I just wanted to get your feedback, you know? Um, and you just, they're, they're going to tell you what they think for sure. And you just, you're going to learn so much in those conversations that will help make your emails better. And they're going to tell you how they'd like to help you, you know, if they're big fans of what you're doing. Um, that's been my experience. Um, let's see. Uh, so any other questions anybody has, uh, just type them in the chat there. Um, if you'd like to come on stage and share a, an experience or a, um, a question, a problem, a challenge, an opportunity that you'd like to get the group's input on, just say so in the chat and I'll, I'll, I'll get you on stage here. Um, let's see. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, one, the big thing that comes up when we talk about this sales lead generation process is you know, that, that measuring and adjusting process, but it really doesn't have to be hard. It's really more of a discipline. You know, you just can't stop looking, right? You got to keep looking. Um, it's all about the opens and the clicks as most of you guys probably know. If, you know, first, when you're first trying that, that email sequence, uh, at the top level, right? The cold outreach sequence, are you getting the emails opened, right? If not, then adjust the subject lines. Don't even worry about the, what's in the email. That doesn't matter yet, right? Uh, adjust the subject lines. If you adjust the subject lines and you're still not getting the opens, then you either got a problem with your list or some kind of reputation issue with your domain or your IP or something like that. Um, once you get the opens, then are you getting the clicks, right? If you're getting in this kind of thing, a, a cold outreach, um, you know, if you're getting two or 3%, you're doing good. So, you know, that's the bar. Um, some people do better, obviously, but, but don't, don't be discouraged if it's in that area. That's pretty good, actually. Um, so once you start getting those, that, two or 3% of clicks, now you got it tuned up. You want to look at each email individually. You want them all performing. Like if you got four emails in your sequence, make sure they're all getting those kind of numbers um, and fix the ones that aren't. And then, you know, now you, now you set up a automation to switch the uh, clickers to the, um, that second level campaign right um and you do the same thing with that campaign look at the opens first adjust the subject lines then look at the clicks and adjust the copy of the email and the call to action and maybe even the content right you may find that some of your emails are just not getting the clicks and it doesn't matter how many times you redesign it or reword it it's just People aren't clicking on it. Well, that's telling you that there 
what you're offering them is just not compelling, right? So you've got to come up with something new. Um, in fact, that's what we talked about last month, finding good content like that. Uh, I'm sorry, I said last month, I said I meant last week. So if you go to our blog post, um, which I'll pull up now, um, you can you can get that um, so you can take a look at that. Bear with me a sec here. A couple of questions came in. So let me get to those once I get this link here. Uh oh. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm having trouble typing my own website in. Okay, here we go. I'm going to get you guys the link that has the recordings to everything. Okay, got it. And I'm going to put that in the chat. There you go. So the recordings to last week and the prior week, those are right there on that, that blog post. Uh, let's see. Another question came in. I'm using MailChimp and have my list organized with tags. Can I transfer that to Sales Nexus? Yes, you can. Yeah, good question. Um, the big difference between Sales Nexus and MailChimp is that we're really a full-blown CRM as well. So you can slice and dice and organize your data in way more ways than you can with most just straight email marketing systems like MailChimp. Uh, but to answer your question, when you download your list from MailChimp, it has the tags in it. And then when you load it into Sales Nexus, you'll have the tags. So you can still, you know, pull up your subscriber list easily or whatever. Uh, and then you can add to that a lot more. Um, let's see, a couple other questions that come up pretty often. How often should I send the emails in these kind of outreach sequences, right? Um, you know, it depends uh, on the audience and your judgment is probably best because you know your market and your audience, but in a cold outreach, if you're only going to be emailing them maybe three or four emails total, right, in the total sequence, um, you don't want it to you don't want to space it out too much. It's kind of like we were talking about with the clicks earlier. You want them to remember, right? So if you send them an email every couple of days, every every three days, something like that, you know, those branding impressions, each email, even though they might be deleting your emails. They're seeing your name, they're seeing your brand name, you know, it's sinking in, right? But if you space it out too much, it's not staying in there, right? So you want to, you know, I think two or three days is what I would go with to start with. But again, your audience may be different and your judgment's uh, the best. Um, let's see. Also, um, emails that are text versus images and, you know, designs and stuff like that. That's a question that comes up all the time. Um, you know, again, for this kind of outreach, what you'll see with the, you know, the, the firms that do cold outreach specifically, they'll always go with pure text. That's mostly because it helps get past the junk folder, you know, or get out of the junk folder, get into the inbox. Um, so, you know, that said, what I would say is um, if that's an issue for you, then you probably want to go with pure text. Um, sort of less is more is my general rule of everything. Less copy, less links, less images. Um, but on the other side, uh, like the, uh, the question earlier about the nonprofit, if you've got a subscriber list that's used to getting your newsletters all the time and they're nicely designed and look great and everything, then there's no reason that your email about a donation should be any different. You know, it, it kind of depends on what else you're also sending them. Um, let's see. Um, yeah. And the other question that comes up a lot is, you know, this whole calling the clicker thing. Some people are sometimes uncomfortable with the idea of calling that person up and sort of freaking them out a little bit because you know how did you know i clicked on your email right um, hopefully for you guys 
you guys are all email marketing pros or becoming pros. So you understand that that's, that's really not a big deal, but some people are uncomfortable with it. Um, what, what I will say is number one, it just doesn't work very well if you don't call them pretty quickly. Um, you know, same day, like we talked about earlier. Number two, you just have to, you know, speak to the customer the right way, right? You don't, you don't call them up and just immediately say, Hey, I noticed you clicked on my link. Are you ready to sign up now? Right. Give me your credit card. <laughs> That's not going to work. You know, it's more, Hey, I noticed you were looking at our, you know, our PDF download or our four steps to market domination or whatever. Um, have you had a chance to look at that yet? I'd love to get your feedback about it. What questions do you have? You know, you're just kind of trying to help them take advantage of what they've already interacted with. Um, and then you take the conversation from there, you know, and as long as you do that, then uh, for the most part, it's uh, not going to be a problem. Um, okay. Anybody else have any questions? Um, going once. <laughs> um, I really appreciate everybody taking the time to join us today. And uh, you'll get later today an email with a link to the recording. So if you want to uh, uh, go back and reference anything, you'll be able to do that. You can share it with people, et cetera. Um, also, real quick, uh, we talked about the authentication and stuff earlier, uh, or we talked about that last week. It's become really important. Some of you may know they've um, Google, Yahoo have changed their rules about that. If you think you're having problems with that and you're just not sure either if it's a problem or how to fix it, uh, we can help you. We have the, the, the tools and the expertise to do that for $3.99. Um, we'll, um, you know, run the, we'll check your reputation. We'll check all your authentication. And then if you're running into issues, um, we can fix all the authentication for you. Um, so let us know if we can help you with that. Let's see. There's another question. Can you help with designing the campaign? Good question. And the answer is yes. Yeah, we do have some packages where, uh, we can help you design your first campaign. Usually the way we try to do that is we'll consult with you. You know, you'll tell us about your strategy, your audience, what your call to action is, what your goal is. We'll work with you to develop that first sequence and help you send it out the first two or three times and help you measure the results and make the adjustments like we've been talking about. And by doing that with you, two or three times, maybe four or five times, you start to see how it all works and how to do it. And you can kind of take the ball and run with it. Um, so, um, but we have, we got great designers, great copywriters, and we can definitely jump in there and help you. Uh, just let us know if um, that would be helpful to you. Um, all right. Well, thanks again, everybody. Uh, appreciate everybody's time. And, um, like I say, you'll get the video later today and uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. We'll be doing it again at noon next Friday, noon central that is. <laughs> Thanks everybody.